Welcome to this answer explanation video for equivalent fractions. This video will talk through the answers to the equivalent fractions worksheet and have a look at some of the tricky bits. Question 1. Write the fraction shown in image A. Use image B to find the equivalent fraction. So in image A we need to count the spaces that have been shaded in. So I have 8 bits that have been shaded in and then we need to know how many that is part of. So how many has the whole been split into? And there are 20. So for A, we have 8 twentieths. So that's our fraction for the first one. We then have to shade in shape B. So I'm just going to have a look at what we have there. And then on your screen, you should now see that the equivalent parts have been shaded in on B. And we can see that we have one, two parts shaded which means that our fraction for B is two fifths because two have been shaded, but there are five in total. So the whole has been split into five parts and we're just looking at two of those five parts. Question two, which two fractions are equivalent to each other? So first of all, we need to write which fraction is represented in A and B and C, and then we're identifying the two fractions which are equivalent. So A, I can see that one part is shaded out of two. So that represents one half. For B, we have four parts shaded out of a possible eight. So that's four eighths. And then C, we have five parts shaded out of a possible eight. So that's five eighths. Now our two that are equivalent, so the two that represent the same proportion of a shape are going to be A and B. And we can show that next to it by writing one half equals four eighths. And we can check that by applying the rule that we looked at. I know that if I multiply my numerator here by four, I'll get four. And if I multiply my denominator by four, two times four is eight. Question three. So we're looking at applying the rule of multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number to find an equivalent. So we have our eighth to start off with, and our numerator here is being multiplied by three. So give us three there. And we need to find out what we do to the denominator to find the missing number here. Now, if we're going to multiply the numerator by three, we need to multiply the denominator by the same number. So I'm going to multiply that by three. Three times eight is 24. So our equivalent fraction is three twenty-fourths. Question number four, write a fraction which is equivalent to one fifth. So I've written one fifth here, and we're going to think about applying that rule again, multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number. There are lots of different answers to this, and I'm just going to give you one example. But as long as you've multiplied the numerator and the denominator by the same number, your answer will also be an equivalent fraction. So we could multiply by three. So my sentences would say, I multiply the numerator by three. I multiply the, den multiply the denominator by three. So if we multiply each by three. So one times three is three. And then the same for my denominator, five times three is 15. So one possible option is one fifth is equivalent to three fifteenths. Question five, using the digit cards below, create three equivalent fractions. This is a really tricky one. There might be some trial and error involved in this, so using the digit cards to create different fractions to then see if you can find an equivalent. I can already spot there are quite a few multiples of 3. I've got 6, 9, 15 and 12. They're all multiples of 3. So I'm thinking that maybe some of those could be used as my denominators because I know how to work between multiplying and dividing by 3 to check if they're actually equivalent. I'm going to try, first of all, six ninths as my first fraction. Because I know that if I then divide by three, I'll get three. In fact, I'm going to write that here. And if I divide this number by three, I'll get two. So I'm actually working with the fraction two thirds. So I can then look at the relationships between the other numbers to see if it looks like they could be the, my answer. So now I'm looking at two thirds. I know that I can multiply my denominator by 
4 to get 12. And if I multiply my numerator by 4, I'll get 8. And I have 8 and 12 available. So another option could be 8 twelfths. For my last one, again, looking for my multiples of 3, I have 15. If I multiply 3 by 5, I'll get 15. If I multiply 2 by 5, I'll get 10. And I have 10 and 15 available. So I could have 10 fifteenths, 8 twelfths and 6 ninths. And they're all equivalent fractions and they're equivalent to 2 thirds. Question 6. Emily is investigating equivalent fractions based on the shape below. Which equivalent fractions could she have found? Find three possibilities. Again, there are so many different options for this question. I've drawn out the shape again here so we can have a look at this shape together. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares going across, one, two, three, four squares going down. So if I multiply my seven by four, I can say that I have 28 squares altogether. Out of the 28 squares altogether, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have four lots of six, which is 24. So that's the fraction that is shaded, 24 28 I could have a look at an equivalent fraction by just looking at half of that shape. So I could half both numbers. I could divide both of those numbers by two. And then I would have 12 fourteenths. So they would be equivalent fractions. Something else I could do is divide it again by two. So I could just have a look at the top row here because each row is exactly the same. They each have six out of seven parts shaded. So that could be six sevenths as another fraction. Something else that you could have done, which would also be correct, you could have actually looked at the part that isn't shaded because it doesn't specify in the question that we're only focusing on the shaded area. So you could have identified that there are four 28ths not shaded and then found your equivalence based on that. But that's one way that we could have a look at that question. Question seven. Fraser is looking at the fractions below. Is he correct? Convince me. So Fraser has one quarter equal to nine twelfths. And he's saying the fractions are equivalent because eight has been added to the numerator and the denominator. So we're thinking about what mistake Fraser's made, what we already know about finding equivalent fractions. We have practiced multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number to find equivalent fractions. So rather than adding eight, he could have multiplied the numerator and the denominator by eight. By adding eight, he has not found an equivalent fraction. He's found a different fraction. So a possible answer that we could say is that Fraser is incorrect because the numerator and the denominator need to be multiplied by eight to be equivalent rather than have eight added to them. That was a video explaining the answers to the equivalent fractions worksheet from Classroom Secrets. For a video tutorial on the same step, go to kids.classroomsecrets.co.uk. For more worksheets, go to classroomsecrets.co.uk. Thanks for watching.